call the council meeting to order. Uh, motion to accept the agenda. Mm -hmm. Councillor Campbell, Councillor Vaughn. All in favor? Carry. Declaration of pecuniary interest, if any. None noted. In for the Reeves report, um, I got a letter uh, from the Salvation Army, and they're doing a couple of training courses uh, later in the month. They're exact dates: the 25th and 26th, and that they are taking care of all the costs on those training courses, but uh, where the Red Cross uh, is called upon in an emergency to provide food and uh, things that uh, this would have people trained and that uh, it's one of the things that they would like people that uh, on a first come first serve basis to sign up for those courses before the 15th of October so that they can have things ready such as the workbooks for them. Um, moving on to the reading of the minutes of the previous meeting. It's uh, September 16th council meeting and uh, the public uh, meeting respecting uh, the proposed William Creek residential subdivision held on September 18th. Councilor McGowan, Deputy Reed Breach. All in favor? Carried. Okay, uh, ready for deputations? Oh, yes. Connie, uh, do you want to explain about uh, what we're trying to do as this well being as the first <laughs> North Huron attempt at it? Sure. As well as I can, we are tr attempting to broadcast live the council meeting tonight. It'll go directly to our um, website and then it will be up there if you want to watch it later but it is going live tonight i hope it looks like it is anyway so okay thank you okay here okay uh, deputations uh, first off we have uh, mr rick elliott chair of the live business improvement area great uh, vincent counselors uh, administration. Um, just to give you an, a little bit of an update on uh, the uh, happening of what's going on at the Blythe BIA. I know that uh, later on in the uh, uh, in the agenda this evening, uh, we'll be getting a report from <coughs> our uh, uh, council member, uh, uh, Mr. Dave Reich. Um But uh, just to give you a, a little bit of a um, a. a a background as to what I'm here for. Um, we we found that the Christmas lights on the main street were in very bad repair, um, so we've uh, come or we've uh, struck a committee for um, the Christmas light committee to uh, try and come up with some ideas as to how we can um, uh, redo either the uh, the existing uh, lights, which uh, or the existing frames, which apparently are a lot of them are broken or come up with some new ideas uh, to uh, uh, light the main street of uh, Blythe for the Christmas season. So we've, uh, we had a, uh, a uh, committee report uh, that came back at our last BIA meeting and uh, uh, I think the committee is looking at uh, some other ideas. We're going to do some outreach to some of the property owners to see if they would uh, uh, be uh, interested in lighting their trees that are uh, in the core of the town. Um, there's uh, two or three trees beside the CIDC. There's more trees in the courtyard of the uh, of the Memorial Hall, which you are the landlord. Uh, there's uh, um, six um, trees along the first block of uh, Dinsley Street on the west side. There's a couple of uh, trees down at the Phillips Studio. Um, there's a half a dozen trees at uh, beside the car wash um, and so if we can try and light up the courtyards or those trees in the in the core of the town it might uh, it might help with the 
the loss of the lights on the on the uh, those decorations because I think they're very very expensive. They're about four to five hundred dollars a piece to replace. Um, so we're looking at a lot of different uh, uh, options. Um, also to give you an update, the uh, website and uh, media video uh, for uh, uh, the uh, Live 365 is progressing well. Uh, it should be, uh, there should be a report back to you by the end of this month and everything should be live by then. Um, I, uh, with, with respect to uh, the uh, 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 following uh, deputations that we'll be discussing uh, uh, pretty much the same thing as I want to talk about in the, from a BIA perspective. Uh, first of all, without, notwithstanding the, the uh, Grandview re redevelopment project, the BIA is pro-economic development and pro-investment. We'd like to see, uh, you know, stuff going on. We like to see people taking interest in our community and wanting to invest here and uh, create jobs and also um, uh, raise families and that sort of thing. Um, I got a phone call today that uh, there's a rumor that <clears throat> just to set the record straight, I do not have an investment in this project. Um, I seem to get, uh, um, I guess by by virtue of being the chair of the BIA, I either own everything and involved in ev everything or invested in everything. So just to let you know, I have nothing to do with this. Um, we do have uh, a number of concerned members on our uh, BIA that uh, want to uh, have brought their, uh, their comments to the BIA board at the last meeting um, and have also brought their uh, voice or opinion to the, the uh, North Huron Council. Um, just to give you a little bit of historical data, um, the a, a lot of, a lot of, uh, of development uh, can have some some great uh, pitting effects uh, to a community, but it can also have some um, detriment to the economic balance that is already established. Um, historically, our community has was able to support five gas stations, four grocery stores. Um, two convenience stores, etc. Um, but historically, margins have fallen. People aren't running on the same margins as if they had 50 years ago or 20 years ago. And uh, so, with Central Huron working in uh, conjunction with the county on this new re redevelopment, um, I hope that North Huron can uh, encourage them to uh, look at the economic impact of today's. Um, uh, community, uh, and I'm talking about the greater greater community, uh, not just applied. Um, and I would also um, like to see that North Huron extend an invitation to the um, to the proposed building people um, to uh, to see if if we can uh, collaborate uh, on a complementary uh, uh, facade. That if they are going to go ahead, that it uh, that the uh, um, the project will uh, be can be part of the community rather than just a business on the outside of on on the highway. Um, there is uh, there is a couple that I have uh, passed, and one is in St. Jacobs, and one is in Niagara on the Lake, where they've actually gone away from the branded um, uh, convenience store building. Uh, or because uh, I understand it's importance, they've kind of gone away from the, the branded style of building and they've actually created it in a in harmony with the uh, historical buildings. So even though it's not in our township, I do think that we need to um, encourage our political partners to make sure that they are following um, all the, uh, the economic impact studies, make sure that they're looking at 2000 and $13 uh, in margins, and um, and then if if it still uh, makes uh, makes a business case, then let's see if we can't uh, encourage them to uh, to be part of the, the community. Um, 
And part of that is also uh, you know, the colors, the theme, the, the, uh, the lighting uh, processes and that, just so that it, uh, it harmonizes with the community. Um, so that's what I wanted to talk about um, this evening, just to make sure that um, from a council standpoint, we do have a uh, balance of members that uh, want to uh, want to make sure that their voices are heard. At the same time, um, there's we like to see progress, but that progress can't be uh, at the uh, at the, uh, the detriment of, of our members. So. <coughs> That's all I have to say. If anybody has any questions, I'd be more than happy to, to answer them before I sit down. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Rick. Okay. The next delegation we have, uh, Mr. Ken Warwick. Thanks very much, Aaron. I'm going to take this. Unbeknownst to me, I'm elected. Uh, Re Vincent, counselors. Um, it's very obvious that Diane and I would not like to see a new gas bar uh, automated um, on the outskirts of Live. Our feeling is that um, the people will stop there, get their gas, get their coffees, whatever bypass by not come to our main street, I think would have a tremendous negative effect on the local village. Just for an experiment, I stopped for a Tim Parkins coffee on the way up. The lineup was so great, I had to run inside and grab my coffee. I drove the rest of the main street, there wasn't a soul on it. That's what happens to your villages. We have not automated, we pump the ladies' gas. We have five, and actually in our letter was five, six employees involved in our gas bar business. We pay out $75,000 a year in wages to the adults and also the students that many have gone on and they use this money for their secondary education. I think, in traveling around, how Small town, Ontario, small town in the world has been decimated by big box company. There is no question Tim Hortons is big box. If it was a major gas company that was setting up this gas bar, it would be totally automated. They would be in a position to sell their product cheaper than I could buy it. So the council has some major forces in that you supply water, <coughs> you supply the sewage, I understand there's no agreement to it. You have considerable force to protect the small merchants of downtown Blythe. Please exercise that. Thank you. I'd just like to add one thing to what uh, Doug was saying there. Uh, the Urine County <coughs> Official Economic Plan, uh, there's a paragraph in it that refers to the water of Central Huron to the village of Blythe. And it states it right in the official plan that Central Huron will not allow a business to go into the border of the village of Blythe that's going to directly compete with businesses, existing businesses in the village of Blythe. Uh, with a variety store, a restaurant, and a gas bar, they're competing with everybody. That's, that's already there. There's, there's no doubt in anybody's mind that it's, that it's directly competing. Thank you, Doug. <coughs> Next delegation uh, is to Wayne McClinchy. Uh, could you just introduce the members of your delegation as well? Pardon me? Could you uh, identify the members of your delegation as well? Uh, it's my wife, Dorothy, my father, Robert McClinchy, and my friend, John. So I chose to read this, uh, Mr. Vincent, because I, I don't want to miss anything. So, so read Vincent and through you to the members of this council. Thank you for allowing me to speak on this important matter. For the outset, I am not here with anyone else, and I am not representing 
any other business or group. I am here as an individual, and while I am not a North Huron ratepayer, I have been in the past and I continue to be someone who cares deeply about the community of Blythe. That said, my reason for being here tonight is to make you aware of the specific problems that have come up with respect to the Grandview restaurant development. These matters may speak to a faulty planning process, and I am pleased to inform you that this council, that the counterparts in Centre here and recently voted to send the planning application back to the county for further exploration and study. Knowing this, I would seek to address my concerns to Reed Vincent and to the members of this council with a particular interest in ensuring that the process is open, honest, and fair to all involved. I am not a resident of North Huron, but these development problems are <coughs> issues that can easily spill across the boundary and hurt everyone. For clarity, my concerns are not based in, in Nimbianism. Neither are they primarily based on issues such as traffic visibility and safety at the corners of County Road 25 and 4. Although I agree with certain members of this council, past and present, as well as the former Blythe Fire Chief and the president of the BBIA, that safety at the corner is a serious <coughs> concern that shouldn't be ignored. In fact, I would be pleased to see the Grandview Restaurant property again be home to a thriving business. That said, not all economic development opportunities are created equally nor is every business expansion positive. As has been suggested in a letter I received from your clerk, for the record, I am the owner of a second generation, family owned business that supports important community institutions and businesses such as the Festival Theater, Scrimmager's Grocery Store, Elliott Insurance, Radford's, the Blythe Convenience Store, and many more in the community. Giving my ongoing support for the community of Blythe, I do not believe that I should be forced to shoulder the negative implications of this development personally or as a business. And that's why I'm here. While I outlined my concerns in my September the 17th letter, copy to this council, I am asking that the council consider the following five points on which I believe the planning, planning process has yet to correctly and adequately address. Number one is the water runoff. Based upon the rendering of the development, I have concerns with the amount of water and snow that will be displaced from the Grandview restaurant property onto my own. This is especially acute given the fact that the property, my property is a former swamp with a high water table. Unfortunately, the two existing catch basins are located up the hill to the north, which will be useless unless the displaced water were to run uphill. Secondly is a snow load. The developers plan to construct an 18 to 20 foot wall slash fence, assuming the cement portion of the wall is built to the equal in the existing grade to the north of my property, presents a threat to my home and business. The developer's plan calls for the construction of a concrete wall to be topped with a wooden fence running along what the developer believes to be the property line. Unfortunately for me, the prevailing winds are north and west, and given the geography of the properties, this means that the snow that would traditionally blow through the corridor between the buildings will be stopped, forcing it to bank up on my property and buildings. Number three is visibility. Financially speaking, I have been assured that development will set out to devalue my property. Worse than the erosion of my equity is the toll the development will take on my earning potential. The development will entirely obscure, obscure visibility of my commercial enterprise from traffic originating from the north, the west, and the east, and in doing so will eliminate my walk-in and my emergency or one-off business potential. Accordingly, it is reasonable to believe that my current income potential will be reduced. My property value. In addition to the lost earning potential that I've already mentioned, my pension plan, which is the property itself, will be reduced in value, which promises to financially impair my wife and I in the future. 
as just one example, the presence of numerous streetlights overlooking my property will thrust the location into perpetual light, which, while this may not seem consequential, I ask how the members of this council would feel if their neighbor built a 20-foot concrete wall topped with high power power lights and, and a 24-7 traffic less than 15 feet away from their windows. And the last thing is ownership. I have studied the rendering of the proposal in detail. I have compared the dimensions and proposals again the survey that my father had done several years ago. In this context, I have several concerns. For example, the proposal calls for the removal of my existing fence to facilitate the construction of a new 20-foot concrete wall immediately adjacent to my, to my commercial facility. Now this may appear routine on paper, but I question the validity of the property lines as suggested by the developer. Put another way, that fence is not theirs to remove. In closing, it is rare that I make waves for my municipal government. I know that you have an impossible task and I am very appreciative of the work you do on behalf of the ratepayers and for those of us who exist across the line in other municipalities. That said, as the owner of a second generation family owned business, my family and I should not be forced to shoulder the negative financial implications of this development. I am asking you for a fair deal and at the very least, I would hope for specific answers to my questions prior to any planning approval. I'm happy to say that the council and center here seem to have heard my pleas, and when the time comes for the matter to land back at county council or should become an issue here, I respectfully ask for the same consideration. Again, a faulty planning process is not in anyone's best interest. I would invite any member of the council to visit my property for a site tour to see firsthand the problems with this proposal. In the meantime, thank you for your consideration. Any questions? Okay, uh, here. Commissioner McClancy, I just want to confirm that uh, you spoke at uh, Central Huron's council meeting last week. I did. And did you raise the, the same five same concerns issues. with them? <laughs> and, and Central Huron <coughs> Council turned it down unanimously. So it's gone back to county. Did the counselors came out to your place too? Right? No, not yet, but they're going. I'm on their tour. I'm going to take a look. But they have turned down that site plan unanimously. Okay. And can we get a copy of that letter, please? Of this? Yeah. <coughs> Thank you, Wayne. <coughs> Thanks, Mr. Vincent. I just, Brock? Um, I just like to uh, indicate that uh, I, for one, on council, and I think this applies probably to all of us, um, we're interested in looking into the details of this and influencing things any way that we can. We have, as you know, very limited uh, power to, to deal with the decisions that are made in a neighboring municipality. But uh, I've gained the sense that uh, Central Huron is open to uh, more consideration, more thoughts about, about this. And uh, I'll, I'll certainly be uh, encouraging us to uh, take every step we can to get a full understanding of this and, and, uh, and a firm commission firm position on this issue. I'll come down and have a look at it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to thank everybody that made a presentation. I know that council appreciates getting your points of view and your information. A lot of points that were brought up this evening are um, concerns that I think we've had with the proposal around the table. Although we're, we're very pro-economic development, we temper that by realizing that um, one must be cautious before jumping in feet first. Uh, you know, not only due to the, the ramifications for current businesses within the municipality, but obviously safety issues. Uh, in particular, I know I've had a concern about the 
uh, the traffic concerns between uh, Highway 4 and 25 for a great number of years. And I don't think we want to do anything that's going to exacerbate that problem. Um, there was previous uses there before. I'm not sure how much control we'll have to see that Century Huron has over that those particular issues. Uh, personally, the convenience store is a bit of an issue because I do not believe that there was that kind of a use there before, and I don't really, from the, the document that was presented, it's not clear how big of a, a portion of this establishment that that part of the, uh, the business is going to take up. 1,425 square feet. Okay. So, I mean, there's a lot of questions we all have, and I'm just thankful that at least Central Huron is, is listening to them. I think that's a positive. And uh, I think we're keeping our ears open, and uh, I know uh, our clerk is keeping discussions open with Central Huron's clerk to make sure that they're aware that these aren't just our ratepayers' concerns, there are concerns as well. Brock? I don't want to be discouraging, but when we, uh, some of us were gravely concerned about the closing of our school in Blythe and the establishment of a new school in Wingham, um, we put forth an economic development argument against that change and the word that we got back was this matter doesn't pertain to any economic development we don't care what the economic development implications are the OMB if this goes to the OMB for a decision they won't even look at an economic development argument well that, that's pretty discouraging but uh, I just like to uh, point that out as a, as a possible factor down there. No. You also do have some control in it that you are the servicing agent yes. on a couple of items. Yes. So before you would agree to that, I would hope that you would justify and satisfy that your repairs are being looked after, Rob. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thank you. Well, uh, we will definitely be talking that over a little more uh, probably and uh, following up on developments with uh, the Central Hurons tour as to how their councillors see it uh, when uh, they, it's what later this month that they, that they will be doing that yeah. and uh, so and personally I've talked safety concerns with a number of them myself already so that um, We'll move on to uh, a special presentation. Uh, David, do you want to lead off? Thank you. As uh, I'm sure uh, a number of people here are aware, and, and some may not be, it's uh, Fire Prevention Week uh, this week. And uh, every year we uh, try and do activities with uh, youth and, uh, and our community to, uh, to encourage fire safety. Uh, but this year is kind of special and it's kind of exciting for our fire department. Uh, I want to preface sort of where I'm going with this. Uh, uh, in Ontario so far this year, there have been 54 people die in uh, structure <coughs> fires. Uh, in a typical house fire in Ontario, now you've got three minutes uh, to get out of your house or you will probably be dead. And faced with that reality, uh, the fire department of North Huron four years ago started our Alarmed for Life smoke alarm campaign, uh, which was intended to ensure that the uh, uh, homes in our municipality, uh, where we live and work, would have working smoke alarms. Because the reality is, whether you're near Toronto, or whether you're in Wingham, or whether you're in Blythe, or uh, Waterloo, if you don't have a working smoke alarm, you're probably going to die. This week, we'll see the conclusion of our campaign. Uh, at the end of this week, our firefighters will been door to door to every home within our municipality. Some homes have uh, been uh, uh, unoccupied or no one present when we were there and we're trying to clean up and catch up with those fe uh, those folks this week. And while we don't have all of our final numbers and won't ho have those for a while, uh, as a quick ballpark, our firefighters will replace batteries or installed new smoke alarms, pulling up to 1,000 smoke alarms over the last four years. And it's a pretty special and exciting moment for our firefighters to be through with this. With all activities, uh, a big chunk of it comes down to leadership, and uh, our captain in charge of this program for the last four years has been Ken DeVries. Uh, Ken was supposed to join us tonight, but uh, about 10 minutes before council, his babysitter uh, canceled. 
So he is now, uh, I think, off of gymnastics as opposed to being here, and I'm, I'm sure he'd probably rather be here. Uh, but I certainly want to acknowledge uh, Ken's work on this. Uh, he's been the quarterback, he's been the go-to guy, and uh, uh, this wouldn't have happened without him uh, stepping up to the plate. As a volunteer and as a rural firefighter, the reality for us is, is that most of the time when we're going to a fire call, one or more of our firefighters will know the person personally involved in the incident. And that makes fire safety and smoke alarms all the more personal for our guys. Uh, Alarmed for Life was a very successful program. It was successful because of North Huron as a community working together. I'd like to thank Council for their support. I'd like to thank our entire community for their support, from welcoming us into your house, in some cases offering cookies and coffee, and in other cases just offering to converse with our guys for a few minutes when it's crappy outside rather than see them go back out into the rain. And at the same time, we'd also like to acknowledge two corporate partners who really stepped up to the plate for us over the last four years. And at this point, I'd ask if uh, Rick Elliott from Elliott Nixon Insurance and Bruce Stain from Stain's Home Hardware would uh, come up to the front with me, please. North Huron, definitely a big thank you to all our firefighters and the leadership they provided. But these two businesses really stepped forward, Elliott Nixon Insurance and Staten's Home Hardware, so that uh, I'll read the Elliott Nixon certificate first. On behalf of the council and staff of the Township of North Huron and the Fire Department of North Huron, Please accept our sincere appreciation for your generous assistance with the Alarm for Life Smoke Alarm Campaign. And uh, for Satan's Home Hardware, on behalf of Council and Staff of the Township of North Huron and the Fire Department of North Huron, please accept our sincere appreciation for your generous assistance with the Alarm for Life smoke alarm campaign. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you. It's great having uh, community businesses step forward in something that helps everybody in the community. So thank you very much. Excuse me. right from day one, and uh, it can't help but get uh, to say uh, Chief John Black had came, came to us and said that this was, uh, this was important to the municipality, important to the communities. David has uh, touched on it uh, very well, um, that this is personal. This, you know, in my business, um, we repair bricks and mortar bumpers and fenders, but we can't replace lives. And there is nothing more important. Being a five-generation business in the insurance business, we know pretty much everybody in this municipality. And to think that anyone would be endangered um, just is, is, is not, it's not worth it. So we were more than happy to step up and help the fire department of North Huron and the residents of the municipality. Thank you. We know it's already saved lives. Thank you all very much. And the last group that I would just like to quickly acknowledge, of course, would be our firefighters. Uh, for uh, four to five weeks uh, a year for the last uh, four years, they've gone door to door. And while they may know a lot of people, some of them are, uh, are less familiar. Uh, but uh, certainly uh, this wouldn't have happened without their work as well. So I'd like to make sure that they get public knowledge as well. Thank you.
just reiterating the council when we hired John Black, it was one of John's dreams to prevent people from being injured in fires. So that thank you very much to the firefighters, those that have followed along in John's dream. Uh, business arising from previous meetings, is there anything? Okay. Uh, in department reports, health and safety, uh, there's the meeting. <coughs> Any questions or comments on the minutes? Uh, moving to point two, director of corporate services, Deputy Clerk. Yeah.
Council uh, uh, McGowan. Uh, through you, Your Worship Kelly, I would reiterate thanks. I mean, it's good to, I mean, we've talked about it a couple of times, but it's difficult to sort of formulate what it would look like until you see it on paper and the costs associated with it. Um, I think these are really good numbers to have, and I think it's going to allow us to be able to plan. You know, maybe we won't be able to do it all at once. Maybe we'll have to pick a priority area and do that. Um, they are significant numbers. I mean, you know, almost 3% of the budget, really a 3% increase for some of those numbers. So we're going to have to be frugal in how we do it and find places to save if that becomes the, the priority of council to get that done. But I think that's excellent information. And now we can do some cost comparisons and, and some cost benefit analysis. So thank you. Uh, and with with the uh, planning that we went through with regard to repairs on, on this, this uh, building, uh, we found that it wasn't economically feasible to do a little bit and leave that up some of it for next year because so much infrastructure had to be put up, like scaffolding and so on. When you're building roads, what's the economically feasible place to cut off? We say we could do a little bite at a time, but at some point, uh, you're losing money because the contractors have to bring in equipment again and so on. Well, our neighboring townships do so many kilometers per year. Their program has allowed them to do that. So if we piggyback with them, um, chances are a two kilometer isn't going to be out of the question mm. because they're already in the area. They're mm -hmm. doing two or four or six kilometers for our neighbors. Add another two kilometers while they're here. And that's why I put that in the report that Morris Turnberry has theirs done. If we get on board at the same time, that will reduce the cost for everyone concerned. Right. That could be very helpful in the planning, uh, and, and we'd have to plan with them <laughs> to, to show. Sure. Great. Okay. Uh, that's all questions. Thank you. And uh, yes, that gives us, as a council, some numbers to look at. And, uh, uh, moving on to the second point, the uh, purchase of uh, four-wheel drive utility tractor. Yeah, um, this is the third piece of uh, equipment that we had scheduled to purchase in our uh, budget. We've come within uh, our budget numbers for the three pieces of equipment. And I've just given you the recommendations and the costing. If there's any questions, I Great. Uh, so that with this one tractor now, we're replacing the two tractors in yeah. one. Okay. Councilor uh, Campbell, second. Any further discussion? Uh, with this uh, tractor, what's the horsepower of it? And. Uh, will it uh, pull the uh, no. That's exactly a good question. That's uh, it's a 35 horse, and uh, it'll definitely pull the 12 foot, which will reduce the hours that are being accumulated on the horse tractor. So we'll see some fuel savings. Um, yeah, that's that was a factor into it. Okay, sorry. okay. All in favor of the motion? Carried. Okay, uh, moving to the Fire Department of North Huron Department update, David. Um, you have your reports uh, in front of you. Uh, you'll notice the lovely color map that when it is color looks really good, but when it's black and white it looks black. Uh, my apologies for that, and I'll uh, either do a color print or maybe we'll do a different uh, style of map. Uh, just a few highlights from the, the report. Uh, first and foremost, uh, with uh, 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 my becoming chief, it created a vacancy uh, within our department uh, for the deputy chief's position of administration. Uh, each of our deputy chiefs has uh, two captains from Bly Station and two captains from Wingham Station that, uh, that report to them. And uh, we posted the position. Uh, uh, Gary and two other uh, chiefs uh, from the area were uh, formed the interview committee. And at the conclusion of the uh, selection process, uh, we're pleased that uh, Captain Chad Krieger from the Wingham Station was the successful candidate. And I asked Chad to join us tonight so that uh, I think he fixes some of your cars and uh, you might be familiar with him, but uh, just so if you hear Chad Krieger, you actually know who he is and, and, uh, and uh, 
from our perspective, uh, talking afterwards as the selection committee, we're, we're very happy uh, that Chad, Chad put his name in. And uh, uh, from a leadership perspective, uh, deputy chiefs along with me are expected to pull the card and lead the, lead the direction of the department. And we're excited about some of the vision and ideas Chad has uh, for the department to go forward. And uh, very excited to have him as uh, our new deputy chief. So welcome aboard, Chad. Thanks. Uh, I don't know how many of these folks uh, know Chad or not, but uh, you'll be taking over the rest of your presentation. <laughs> no, yeah, that's, that's fine. Here you go. You're the coach now. Do I get to grill him now? <laughs> not too much. Oh, <laughs> well, I'm very excited to uh, in the new position. Um, I've been training officer for the last hundred years, it seems. So it's a new new avenue for me. Um, I'd just like to take the time to introduce and shake everybody's hand. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Personally, I... So now he's going to make a run for us. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm going back to the fire seat. I've known Chad as a training officer for a number of years, and uh, thank you for your dedication and the way you have persevered and uh, went on and learned many of the things in the fire service. Glad to see you advancing. Thanks. Thank you. Wish my wife would say the same. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks, Chad. Thanks, Chad. Um, just a couple other uh, uh, points of uh, sort of highlights. Uh, we've been talking about uh, Fire Prevention Officer Egan uh, initiating uh, safe buildings for a safer community. And uh, to that effect, uh, he has initiated several uh, inspections uh, to ensure safety and compliance uh, with structures in our community. And certainly over the next year, that's going to be very much uh, uh, an active uh, file and an active place within our department. And uh, the other thing, if you go to the training section, you'll notice under specialized training that in the last month, we've had a lot of personnel completing some uh, some nice specialized training. Fire Marshal's office did a, a clandestine drug lab and grow up uh, presentation at the uh, training center in Bly uh, for over two nights. We took the opportunity to split our, uh, our stations in half and each night uh, uh, half of each of the stations attended this presentation. It's pretty scary and pretty eye-opening, uh, the sophistication and the danger associated with these uh, places. And rural areas are certainly not exempt from it, and that was uh, a very worthwhile presentation and, and for the safety of our guys and, and uh, as a department. The other thing you'll notice is, is that we are, uh, uh, I want to say beat the clock, but the uh, Ontario Fire Marshal has uh, mandated that April 1st the existing fire curriculum will uh, cease to exist and be replaced with a new one. Uh, prior to April 1st, there's an opportunity for us to get our firefighters uh, training wrapped up under the current curriculum and they'll be grandfathered <coughs> into the new system. We don't know all the details, but over the next few months, you can see a lot of guys taking firefighter uh, uh, module A and module B courses, uh, because while no one's sure, one thing is is for sure: if they've completed it, they can sign on and move forward. And there is some anxiety if they haven't completed it. What does it mean if you're uh, if you're partially through and not complete? So you'll notice over the next little while we're uh, we're getting guys through to have them uh, fully uh, fully accredited under the current curriculum to carry forward. And the, uh, the last note is, is that uh, with Chad's uh, promotion and the retirement of Captain Steve Redmond, there are two captains positions now open in Wingham Station. And uh, those positions will be uh, filled uh, uh, by the end of this week as well. That selection process is uh, halfway through and completed Wednesday night. Any questions? Steve, if you could outline the uh, sort of rundown for next Wednesday's Ceremony. Certainly. Well, you're getting a formal invitation uh, tomorrow afternoon uh, by email, but uh, next Wednesday uh, at the uh, Belgrave Community Center, both stations will be coming together. Uh, we've got several significant retirements within our department. I think if you add up the years of service of the four individuals, you come to about 100 years of service. So those, those are fairly significant. We want to make sure we recognize those properly. We've got uh, firefighters to be sworn in who have completed the recruit training. Uh, we've got captains and uh, uh, deputy chief to swear in. And likewise, we've got some firefighters who are still uh, carrying on with the fire department that have got 20, 25, and 30 year service awards to be, uh, 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 to be handed out in an acknowledgement to, to go with that. Uh, time will be next Wednesday at 7.30. Like I say, formal invitations go out uh, tomorrow to council and uh, 
uh, to firefighters and their uh, uh, to retired fighter uh, families as well. Thanks. Okay, moving forward to new business. Um, and so, uh, uh, so the West Economic uh, Alliance, WIA, uh, has requested a resolution uh, for the need for better intercity transportation options in southwestern Ontario. Uh, <coughs> basically, uh, part of it was spurred by VIA cutting a number of the trains out of southwestern Ontario. But as well as that, we've even lost bus service uh, between the towns and the cities. So, uh, what is your pleasure? Uh, Councilman Rod? I would move that we support this uh, very much, and, and I think it uh, would be a good idea for us to be involved as much as possible in this process because there's a tendency when they talk about transportation to just talk about subways and, uh, and, and other aspects that don't really involve us and the continuation of spending billions of dollars in the urban areas and, and not a cent for the public transit or public transportation in areas like this. So, uh, sometimes these groups, even like AMO, and they, they interpret this as uh, not really a rural issue, but uh, they concentrate just on the trains, just on the vehicle, and not the the ground issues that we have. But I, I move that we uh, support this motion. I'll second. Second. Any further discussion, uh, Gary? I also wanted to note that uh, SWIA is having a, uh, a symposium on Thursday, November 14th, in the afternoon in London to discuss uh, the need for better uh, inter intercity transportation in <coughs> some western Ontario. So it may be advisable uh, for council uh, to have represented there, just to pick up on Council Bond's comments. At least one. I'd be willing to go. All in favor of the motion? Carried. <laughs> and point two, Alice McDowell, principal of Maitland River Elementary School, was uh, a letter concerning school community safety issues. Uh, so, Your Worship, obviously, with you know, this is very serious, and we need to look into it as quickly as possible. Um, I wasn't, I was away, or you know, not even involved in a lot of the planning process once the school was started. Um, I can tell you that once the school was finished, I was a little concerned with the fact that I had always thought that uh, Summit Drive was going to be connected. Um, which it isn't, and I don't know what transpired, and I, I wouldn't mind, I know I talked to Gary today, and he's going to be acquiring some more information sort of on what happened um, between the school board, and, and I, I know there was a traffic study that was put together, and I know a great number of neighbors around the school had you know, serious concerns that exactly what we're seeing happening was going to happen. And uh, I can tell you from personal experience and perspective, both, you know, my wife and I have have a sign in that school, and it is extremely busy. Um, I think if it, if Summit had been connected and that had possibly been made a one-way street, it would have cut down the traffic a great deal. Some parents are having to uh, go to the extremes of parking in the hospital parking lot and have their child walk up rather than driving down because it's so congested. Um, and I've even seen situations trying to turn uh, eastbound onto John Street from Carly. Uh, in the morning is almost impossible at times. So there are serious concerns. I don't know whether the, the things that are suggested are the right answers. Um, you know, Kelly will have some input into that. Obviously, the police chief, uh, Tim Poole, 
Um, but I think something in conjunction with the school does need to be looked at. So, uh, direction that to have Kelly in conjunction uh, yes. with Wayne Police Services and I would make that uh, bring back uh, the information report. Yeah. I would just like to see the, the traffic report uh, and everything that she's asked for here other than the crossing guard, we can, we can do like right away. We can make the crosswalks, we can put up the signage. Uh, I think it's just the crossing guard. The speed bumps, I'm not in favor of speed no, bumps. No. Talking to Tim Poole, you know, everything, the signage and the crosswalks look like something that we can do right away. So. Okay, Just um, one, one other question through your worship to Kelly. That street, the way it dead ends now um, right. at the far end of the school, how much of a, of a problem is that going to cause for snowplow operations in the world? Well, it's definitely going to be uh, trying for the first little while. But and, I, and I guess my concern comes because if we think it's constricted now, yeah. put four foot banks on the side of it and pile up snow at the end. And that really is concerning. Um, so, you know, I think I think there should be a meeting too with the, the school representatives of whoever the board. Uh, once you've had a chance to sort of absorb the traffic study, because uh, I don't think this is just our like I think this has to be a, a group solution, really. You no, know, Alice McDowell writes about the students in the school community and her concerns, but I don't see anything here from the board. No. Uh, Brock? It was my understanding when we were planning all of this that the the uh, the board was accepting responsibility for the traffic issues. Uh, and many of us thought that it was a terrible place to put a school, but and a lot of the neighbors were concerned about the tra possible traffic issues and safety issues. And the board seemed to be saying, "Well, we'll look after. It. We'll look after." It. And so I, I agree with Councilor McGowan that this is this has to be a joint solution. And uh, I, I don't think that it's the place of the principal of the school to approach counsel, this council that she should be approaching her own boss to, uh, to find out what the situation is and find a solution. Two, just two things. Well, one, your worship. The, the one thing about moving the community safety is on the signs, that, that could be done immediately. I, that's where I'm concerned. It's all already yeah, in any of the signs. And the crosswalks could be put in right away, I mean, as long as the weather is conducive to that. So some of the items can be dealt with fairly quickly. Now, uh, from, from the end of John into the school, is belongs to the school board for one right. year. Correct. So if they want anything done from there in on that road, they'll be able to do that. And then after we assume right. that road, we'll maintain it. Right. That road, and that I think that's for clarity of the public. Yeah, that part of the road is not a state <coughs> municipality at this that's point. Correct. But I, even with these things, I have great concerns that 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 is not going to solve the traffic problem. Um, and we're going to see more situations that are going to cause uh, concerns. And I think there needs to be a longer term vision to solve the problem. Uh, just going on to the next item, and that's the crossing guard. And I was always under the impression that the school board provided crossing guards. Is that not the case? Currently not. In, in Wingham, we've never provided crossing guards before. I, we, we were very fortunate that uh, community living supplied. We did cover that. OK, my, I'm correct. Is that my apologies. I didn't know, so it must have been through us. We supplied the, cross, the crossing guard at Josephine and Victoria Street until we put in the new crosswalk. No, hold on, my apologies. I, just to make clarity, I was meaning there used to be a crossing guard that was supplied by Community Living that was at the corner of Francis Street and John. Correct. Right. And that was Community Living. That was Community Living. That was what I was speaking of. I, I realized there used to be a crossing guard down at Josephine and Victoria, but because of the light, <coughs> I don't think we require that anymore. So, you know, I think Tim needs to have some, uh, Chief Poole needs to have some input into that as well, and then I'm sure we can discuss the, the longer term ideas as quickly as possible. Without putting in a season snow plowing, we don't know what kind of issues are going to be. I think that's going to be really the telltale. Councilor Bailey? You talked about 
Mr. McGill touched on a lot of stuff I wanted to touch on, but uh, bringing up the Community uh, Living Association who supplied the garden before, should they not be part of the conversation too in case they want to supply the garden again? Uh, just through you, Councillor Bailey, I, I don't think that's a bad idea, but I think that we're dealing with such traffic flows now that they may not want to put uh, put the people that we're assisting in, in that area. I, mean, I, th I think it's that significant, and I'd encourage anybody to go up at you know, 20 after 8 or 8.30 in the morning and then around you know 20 after 3 in the afternoon. It is, it is really quite something. And uh, I mean, I think they knew the enrollment numbers they were going to have, and it, it depends too. The weather was bad today, so today was a particularly bad day because all the parents were obviously driving their kids, the ones that are fast. Um, but I know I've had a number of parents mention to me that they are now utilizing the hospital parking lot just because it gets so congested down there that you can't even, you almost can't move between the uh, where the kiss and fly drop drop off is there by the school. It's just so congested. Of cars moving in and out so quickly, and, and the lineup is long, and it's it's really causing a lot of problems. Okay. Um, so, would the motion be for Kelly to proceed <coughs> with items that he can do right away, and that further information uh, will be brought back to council? Yeah, if I might, Your Worship, I would even suggest that. I think your wording is very good that Kelly handled the items that he, he can control and deal with immediately. Uh, and I would also you know, recommend that there be a meeting set up between you know the clerk and Kelly and, and I think the board representatives to try to come to a more long, longer term, safer solution. I know Dean Black has also been in contact with okay. Alice over the So we, we need to respond to, the, to these letters, I think. Uh, yes. Um, you're moving? Yes, I am. Uh, second. Councilor Campbell seconds. Uh, further discussion? Yeah, I think, um, and this is maybe out of the box and, and long term, but I think that uh, probably the traffic concerns uh, should be sent to Morris Turnberry uh, because eventually there is a there our plans for a link road to go down to Highway 86, and that probably alleviate a lot of the problems. So maybe if uh, if Morris Turnberry were aware of the congestion problems, they could be persuaded to uh, move a little quicker on on that road. In, in fairness, it, you know, I don't I don't think that's a bad idea, but I think that's a much like a very long, long term solution. <laughs> I think that's part of the discussion, but I think the immediate concerns need to be discussed between the municipality, the police department, the works department, and the school board. Um, you know, and whether that, you know, I could see a situation if some of it had been connected to one-way traffic. I think it would have, it would have really substantially made a difference with the exiting traffic. They could have cut uh, to summon over to Patrick and down the lights and then out. Um, and I'm not, a, I mean, I'm not a traffic engineer and I can't recall what that study said, but I think Kelly needs to have a look at it and, and really delve into some of the numbers and see what we're actually seeing compared to what they had said there was going to be. Absolutely agree, but Morris Turnberry have to become aware and if we don't approach them and don't let them know mm -hmm. what the concerns are, because <coughs> their kids are going to the school as well. Yes. And so they have to be aware so that maybe, maybe they would choose to react. Okay, we have a motion. All those in favor? Carried. Just a couple of points, Reed. I uh, circulated this letter to, uh, to senior staff, including uh, Chief Poole, and Chief, Chief Poole responded and uh, acknowledged that uh, he and uh, Mark Director of Public Works have discussed items one and two. Uh, Chief Poole also indicated that uh, he, he is supportive of a, uh, a crossing guard. Uh, and uh, he deferred the issue of speed bumps to uh, Director of Public Works. I also wanted to mention, just in reference to the Summit Drive, uh, that uh, in 2010 there were several site plans that were proposed and were revised based on discussion between the various parties. There were a couple of conceptual plans that included a summit drive extension. 
but I think they were put on the uh, site plans as sort of a sort of a conceptual plan for future development. And I know there were there were there were, were not many discussions uh, between the school board, the municipality, the engineers, the planners about the summit road extension, some drive extension is primarily about the John Street extension and anything regarding anything north of John Street extension was considered future development. Mm -hmm. So they put together these uh, site plans that uh, were really sort of futuristic. <coughs> Just by way of background. Sure. sure. I, I mean, my only concern is that clearly ever, there was concerns about traffic and now it's sort of come to fruition and it's, we need to deal with it as a, as a group, so. <coughs> Sorry, if, if I may as well, uh, the school board uh, had their engineer prepare a traffic impact study. There was one done in, in April 2010. That uh, traffic impact study was sent to our consulting engineer. He reviewed it a number of revisions. Those revisions were incorporated into the final revision, which was produced in September 2010. So uh, I flipped through the uh, traffic impact study from September 2010, and of course they've, they've included uh, intersection movements and uh, traffic forecasts and pedestrian forecasts, mm -hmm. and well, based on the study, they feel that uh, traffic and pedestrian operations along John Street will continue to be adequate after the completion of the new school and appropriate measures have been proposed to service the transportation needs of these facilities. Just, just FYI. And I, and I do recall, if you your worship, that what part of that was the municipality extending the sidewalks down, which we, which we did. Uh, that was part of that recommendation, if I recall it's correctly. Yeah, we but, certainly complied with it. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's great that the engineers from both sides thought it was going to be okay, but clearly in, in, in practical terms, it's not. <coughs> so um, I think the quicker that we can sit down and discuss the issue and, and try to plan on how we're going to deal with it so that there's nothing, um, we can come up with a solution that alleviates it and nobody gets hurt. I think that we need to be quick yeah. about it. Uh, I just want to make one mention about the speed bumps uh, with the ambulances frequently going up that street. That would not be a good idea to have speed bumps in there. Right. Moving on to council information, points that councillors may want to bring forward. Uh, Councillor Helen. Number five. Um, we mentioned that uh, Sylvia Jones uh, Agrivet Recycling Program. Uh, I think we should be supporting that. Uh, okay. Um, uh, that <coughs> is uh, basically contacting our MVP and, yeah. and uh, uh, getting back. So following the recommendations? Yes. And you're removing that. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Bailey. Any further discussion on that one? All in favor? Carried. Councillor Wadden. I'd like to comment on number six, the Rural Forum on Aging and at the risk of uh, being in a conflict of interest. I've signed up for this. I'm attending that meeting in Stratford. Very good. But uh, I'm going to make a comment on number eight, but I'm not sure when the municipality uh, got a copy of uh, the request for the up to five people to attend the conference that, uh, for number eight, the Ag Ambitions uh, program. Uh, to my knowledge, information on that was unavailable uh, at the end of the international plowing match. Um, I know some other groups were notified uh, the 23rd of 
September, which left a very short time period uh, for people to be notified. And one of the things that bothers me as a counselor is the number of things that the, de the deadline has passed before we even get it. Um, that I know that I will be bringing it up uh, at Committee of the Hall Day 1 at County on Wednesday, but uh, that there's a number of people in North Huron that fit the qualifications very well that are starting into agribusinesses and that uh, I would have liked to have been able to have told them that uh, there, there was that opportunity where such a short window uh, for applying uh, was made available to them. And when the window closed, the 2nd of October, um, I'm not sure that we, we should be wasting paper uh, on even uh, printing it uh, when there's nothing we can do about it after the fact. And that's something I'll take up with county. Is there any indication of who, where this came from? I couldn't see any on the um, paper itself. It's part of the county uh, trying to do something towards youth training and employment. Uh, there was a subsidy program came out. Uh, there was advertisements for a person to run the program uh, done the end of April. They hired a person in August, and this is the next thing I've heard. Uh, so that it's a, pro it's a program, but I don't think it may be geared to getting to the people that I believe really uh, should be part of it. Uh, this conference that they're wanting two people to, or five people to go to, and they're talking about students, but this is a Wednesday and Thursday, 16th and 17th of October. Uh, it seems too much like a last minute thing uh, to finally get something done because nothing else got done. Here. When council, or when we receive uh, invitations, um, where there are some time constraints, would it be helpful for us to issue those to council via email? We can also include them on the public council agenda down the road. But uh, would that be would that be helpful in this it, particular case? The uh, time sense of the emails to council, uh, definitely. And I'm not saying you can catch them all because you have to carefully read some of the deadlines and, and to realize they are deadlines, but uh, know that uh, just as a casual note, if uh, that could be done by email, it would assist. Hey. Could I suggest that they also go out, uh, like uh, some of these uh, would probably include members of uh, business improvement areas, so they could they be sent out to the BBIAs as well. Uh, so just out of curiosity, um, if we send information out by email that the council has to make a decision on, even though we're getting it three or four days ahead of time, we don't need as a council to make a decision on it. I'm uh, just wondering what, what type of information. Th this is the information that we could give to residents of our municipality. It isn't our council decision, uh, making the decision. It's so to, to get it out so our counselors can think of people in our community that would be able to uh, take advantage of these. Thank you. I just want to be very clear on the fact that we as counselors do not mm -hmm. circulate emails that were decisions we can make. That this is strictly an information to counselors on something like this. But 
Is there any other points? Uh, number 10, the June Call uh, Outstanding Achievement Award for Volunteerism. The problem we have is picking between so many people that we have that have done a lifetime of volunteering and uh, being a strong part of the community. Okay. Um, Excuse me. Uh, I know this kind of thing has come up before, and it seemed to me that the only thing that we could legitimately do is is circulate the the uh, the notice to groups that that might want to nominate someone for for these awards, just to make sure that the coverage is is adequate. But I don't think we should be in the business of uh, selecting the person to. To uh, fit the criteria. If uh, that and the, there's a thank you uh, from European Appliance team, uh, that uh, do we have a motion uh, to uh, receive, order, and file? Deputy Reed, Councillor Bailey. All in favor? <coughs> Carried. Uh, moving to committee reports, blind BIA. Uh, there's the written minutes. Uh, is there anything else, Steve? Um, those are the minutes from September 4th. Uh, there's, I ha actually brought the minutes from the last meeting with me tonight. Uh, I finally got typed out today, so I can distribute those if you would like to see them. Um, uh, other than that, uh, we have decided to go ahead with the street lighting program, and we have uh, we have authorized a $1,200 uh, expense to, to purchase uh, lights, and uh, the committee met after the BIA meeting, and we've decided to go with the candy cane. Uh, theme, so we're going to wrap uh, rope lights around our light poles and start out with red and green and then in the center of town go with all white and uh, encourage the businesses to uh, put different colors on the in their storefronts and uh, also we'll be putting different colors in the memorial, uh, in the memorial hall uh, courtyard. 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 Uh, there's a question for for Deputy Re Reach. Uh, under council update, it says sign and permit fees have been waived. What what does that refer to? Under the council update, sign. Oh, uh, the Blythe Business Improvement Area uh, purchased another um, sign to put at the north end of, of Blythe, and uh, I had called Dave Black to to talk about getting permission to put the sign up and uh, he said put it up and he'll waive the permit fees and so on. Oh, that's good news. Okay, thank you Dave. Um, moving uh, to the Health and Safety Committee report of September 26th. Is there any questions? <coughs> okay. Uh, moving to the Maitland Valley Conservation Authority report, there's notes for July 17th and September 26th. Is there anything, uh, questions or comments uh, that you have for James? Or James, do you have anything? No, there has been, just in regards to uh, the presentation of the Friends of the Falls, uh, there has been a new group has come forward and we are going to start up a, a non-profit organization. So they will be able to uh, probably get some trillion grants to help out. And I think you know, we're just working on a, an agreement kind of thing for them to take over the running of the Falls Reserve. So that's what we're working on right now with them. 
nonprofit or nonprofit charitable? Nonprofit charitable. Sounds good. Hey, just a question for Councillor Ken. Uh, there was the, uh, the rope climbing and all that out at the Falls Reserve. What's happened with that? It's still going. Uh, it hasn't taken off like they, uh, they assumed it would, but it is still really struggling. So, I'd like to follow Council up on that, on that question. So is this new group going to be responsible for that program? Entirely separate. It's entirely separate. Yeah. So there's a, a board of directors for the, for the I know challenge. I know there is. Yes. And they don't seem to want to meet with Maitland Valley. Okay. Or uh, HBDC. Or anybody else, maybe. <laughs> Yes. I know they had a hard time last fall because some of the teachers, not last fall, a year ago, uh, the teachers did not want to do volunteer programs outside of school hours. So a lot of the ones, a lot of the programs that they had booked to go to, they did not attend. So they lost a lot of money there, which they had planned, planned in their books that that's what was going to help them out. They're still struggling. Okay, thank you. Uh, moving to council reports and inquiries. <coughs> Councilor Bailey? I'm going to put a motion forward, Doc. Uh, For a motion for that the Council of North Huron is against the deep uh, geological repository posted uh, that's proposed for Bruce County by the General Power uh, Corporation for the low and inter intermediate nuclear waste. Just can't see putting the waste aside. The lake. Okay. Councilor Bailey? Second for discussion. Okay. Do we still have any seconds? Councilor Vaughn. I understand that the the concern that uh, some people are raising about this. Uh, I think that's been pretty well negated by the fact that storms don't affect underground uh, situations. Uh, uh, so that that's that's an unwarranted uh, fear. Um, Councilor Dale, hey, Councilor Dale. Um, right now in Germany, they thought that too. Right now in Germany, they have a real big problem with one of their deposits for doing that, and they've got quite a mess on their hands. I don't know the details of it. I had a phone call the other day to tell me that. This again, everybody thinks a plane's not going to fall out of the sky or a boat full of oil's not going to go down in the river, but um, I see this as a big issue. We're sitting on an earth with lots and lots of deserts. Why don't they just put it in the desert? Another part of what I see as a big problem is the fact they're going to drive right up the main street and bring it and it to deliver a lot of this stuff because it's just not only from their own location here, they're bringing it in from all over. I really think it's something we should take a serious look at and take a serious stand. I mean, there's only so much drinking water in the world. Sure. Um, when I was at AMO this year, uh, I talked with the people from the nuclear waste management and uh, Ruth Power about the, uh, about the waste management and uh, the conversation I have had with them uh, allayed a lot of the fears that I had with regard to nuclear waste and so I would suggest that uh, before we pass a motion such as the one Councillor Bailey has suggested that we uh, bring a delegation in from nuclear waste management to uh, tell us about it and explain what they're burying and the, the danger or the lack of danger uh, with this product. And, uh, 
I, I agree, I don't want a lot of nuclear waste running up past my door, but at the same time, uh, what was explained to me is that it's not as dangerous as uh, a lot of the nuclear waste that comes from a lot of other nuclear power plants around the world. Right. So let's, uh, let's at least be informed before we make a decision. So did you I was just going to say, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to support the motion, but not because I don't agree with the, the premise of it. It's more I don't like negative motions. But what I would like is if we could please get some additional information. I mean, we've all heard bits and pieces in the news, but I don't think any of us, or at least myself anyway, have been able to frame a, uh, an intelligent understanding of what exactly is being uh, proposed. Um, I don't know for a fact that the travel routes will travel through our town. I, I have no factual information except for the bits and pieces I've heard on the radio. I don't think it's a bad idea to have somebody from uh, the Nuclear Authority to come up or, or Bruce Nuclear or whoever to explain it to us, but I would also like to see some of the information on it so we clearly you know, have a clear and cogent understanding of what exactly is being proposed before we just you know, make a, a, a blanket uh, motion or a letter. Um, I personally am you know, equally as concerned about the amount of water that's getting drawn out of the Great Lakes as compared to whether or not they may be contaminated or not. And uh, that may be for another motion as well. But I'd like to have more information before we make a just sort of a, a carte blanche blanket motion. Well, for myself, a big part of the nuclear waste is the high level uh, spent fuel. And that that is the information that I have been able to really follow up on. And that I don't really feel that I have enough information on the medium and low level uh, to make an informed decision as of tonight anyway uh, myself so that um, I feel that I need a lot more information than I currently have right now and that as is it enough science-based um, deep repositories are one thing that the tornadoes or hurricanes, uh, the tornado in Godridge was an F3. But what would an F5 do to some of the above ground storages that are uh, currently in place? Uh, it, I think we need more information as to how we, we could uh, really uh, come through certain situations. Councilor Lund. The, the problem that we're up against in so many of these areas, like the, the wind turbine issue and so on, is that uh, if you talk to one side of the argument, uh, they cover all the bases and they have all convincing evidence. And then you hear the other side and, and they've got their own convincing evidence and, and they all at least most of them claim that they're legitimate uh, in their beliefs. So we have to end up making a decision with uh, probably not enough information, but as much as we can get. Uh, so I agree with people in getting as much as we can get, but that doesn't necessarily make the decision for it. Because sometimes it's only the, the force of the speaker that determines which one we believe. Thank you, Mr. I appreciate all the conversation and I appreciate the fact that you gentlemen are willing to have different ones come and speak to us um, and we'll move forward with that. And I hear where you're going with this. I just find it interesting that we made a decision on wind turbines without anybody coming to speak to us. It's wind for God's sake. We're talking about radiation. I'll let it go at that and I appreciate if we can get um, people in to talk to us about this because I think this is a very serious situation. Um. The motion on the books right now. I'll just table it. Uh, I'll have other people talk to us. Table it to, till we can yep. uh, have more information. Yes. Virtual. Just a point uh, of order. You, you can't table a motion. So I didn't think you'd have to, when you have to withdraw it and then make a type of tabling motion. Um, Does the motion on the floor with a seconder? Can you do that? If I have a seconder of the tabling motion, all discussion stops. Second, okay. Okay, um, you seconded the original yes. motion, Ray, 
are you agreeable to obtain one motion? Yes. Okay. Those in favor of the tabling motion? Okay, carry for the tabling motion uh, so that uh, direct staff to uh, dig out information for us. Okay, anything else in uh, council inquiries? Clerk Administrator's report. Okay, thank you, Reef. Uh, just a couple things for uh, council's attention. On Friday, uh, I received uh, a letter from uh, Rob Enders, Chair of the North Huron Police Services Board. Uh, Mr. Enders is announcing that uh, he is resigning uh, effective December 31st. Uh, new responsibilities with uh, his employer uh, prevents him from continuing with the board uh, past the end of this year. So I would propose that this letter appear on the October 21st council agenda for <coughs> further consideration and discussion, but just wanted to make council aware of Mr. Andrews' letter. Also wanted to note that uh, the week of October 21st to 25th is local government week in Ontario, and letters were sent to uh, Maitland River, Effie, McGill, Sacred Heart and Hullet Central, making them aware of the fact that uh, it is local government week. We've also um, indicated that uh, council representatives uh, and staff would be more than pleased to attend their schools and, and speak to uh, whether it's a grade five class uh, or a grade 10 civics class. I believe that uh, we were invited to two or three schools uh, last year. We're, we're certainly received well. Hopefully we'll uh, get the same response. We'll certainly do a follow-up phone call to the students as well. I also wanted to mention that uh, I will bring forward more specific information regarding alternate voting methods at the October 21st council meeting. Also wanted to note uh, that we were approached by a company working for Bell Mobility, and Bell Mobility would like to erect a new telecommunications tower in Blythe, adjacent to our public works shop. There have been discussions between our director of public works and uh, company officials. So at the next meeting, you will see uh, a bylaw and an agreement <coughs> for your consideration, whereby we would be entering into a contractual arrangement with Bell Mobility for the installation of this tower. This would provide an additional uh, $14,000 in revenue to the municipality. Just wanted to provide you a heads up. We will provide more specific information at the October 21st meeting. I can confirm that we've received uh, a draft agreement and a site plan and that um, the uh, proposed agreement is being reviewed by our lawyer we'll have comments from him by the uh, next council meeting. Council is there one thing, Your Worship, and I don't know whether you can answer this or perhaps the clerk can, is, is the number of quotas is that a typical fee for this fee for communication time? That's our understanding. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <coughs> Connie, do you have I just wanted to say that the Alice Monroe Festival, once again in North Huron, was a real success. It was very exciting. We actually had people who attended from the United Kingdom <coughs> who planned their trip to uh, North America, to actually to Boston, so they could be here during the Alice Monroe Festival and flew up to the area so they could attend. So it was very exciting. It was another well-attended event. And um, I know I've said it before, but I really think that this is a, a festival to watch. I really think it'll grow. So. Good or good? Uh, two things. Uh, just going on with what Connie said, uh, I attended the the Alice Munro Festival banquet, and all I can say is, wow, it was a real event that was uh, just something that makes your heart warm, and uh, of the participation of the of the people and the contestants was was just phenomenal, and uh, it just it's really a 
I think, uh, a pat on the back for Mark Huron for supporting it, and I just hope that we'll continue to support it on into the future. And the other thing that I wanted to, to mention, and uh, I attended the, uh, the 1419 meetings in live this past week, and uh, we we met in the in the Blythe Public School, and uh, basically some of the some of the plans for the future development of the 1419 campaign were were laid out, and uh, it was stated several times that the renovation and the moving ahead with the the Blythe Memorial Hall was uh, was number one priority, and uh, the the development of the public school into an arts center uh, is still down the road, but the Memorial Hall renovations are, is the number one priority. Okay. Here. Just uh, wanted to mention that your agenda indicates uh, that there will be an in-camera session. There's one item dealing with uh, identify identifiable individual, specifically a property tax sale. I do have one more in camera item dealing with identifiable individual, uh, specifically uh, fire department work here on personnel. Thank you. Yes, my, my apologies. Uh, I want to share my time with uh, my director of finance. Thank you. Um, so on Friday, as we were anticipating, the small rural and northern municipal infrastructure capital fund program was announced. Um, as we anticipated, there's a short turnaround time. The um, expressions of interest have to be back into them by November 1st. Um, so again, it's going to take a lot of work to get that done um, to meet those deadlines, of course. Um, there is $71 million in total capital funding that is available under this program, which when spread out across the um, uh, whole province, that is still, we're grateful for the money, but it's going to be, um, um, you know, based on a competitive process as well. Uh, the projects are capped at $2 million, so um, that would be the most that you would be able to apply for. This is provincial funding only, and it's a, again a two-stage process where the expression of interest has to be in first. If you make it through that round, then your um, the second round is to submit a full-blown application. Um, as with the last time we submitted a uh, project, it's up to 90% of the total project cost is the most that you could ask for. And you also have to guarantee that you have your asset management plan in place. Um, so the, um, the asset management plan has to be posted on your website by May the 30th, 2014, but it has to be completed by December 31st of this year. So um, we're working away on to meet those deadlines. So for the October 21st meeting, what I need to find out from you, first off, we haven't received our information from Burnside. They've been working on this project all year. Um, to be able to get us our total numbers as to the details of the project and what the total cost is. Um, if you remember the last time we applied, I think this is about the third time we've applied for funding on this project because it has been such a high priority for us. And just um, for those who are maybe not familiar with that, this is um, the Mill Street project in Blyth. It's had many names. We've called it Westmoreland Street, the Blyth Creek, Mill Street. Um, it, it, it's had a number of projects, but that project names. But that's the project that we are um, referring to. And again. Um, previously, it, it had, um, we tried to apply first under phase one, but this would be the full project phase one and phase two, which would be um, the project complete, which would certainly alleviate some of the stormwater pro uh, problems that we're experiencing. And really, it's um, crucial for the growth of Blythe to be able to get this stormwater under control down there. So um, that's why we're excited about this. I also just wanted to note that um, under the previous program, I believe it was either 20 or 21 municipalities were selected to have 
those projects, 20 I guess, that were previously submitted were selected and they did receive the funding. So we did not, so we weren't on that list of 20. But however, for small municipalities under a population of 5,000, which we are, um, they are going to allocate between 20 to 25,000 doll additional dollars for our asset management plan to ensure that they're completed by the end of the year. So we did receive $22,000, which we purchased software. It didn't quite cover the software. Um, and also the fee to complete the plan at that time was $10,000, which we didn't have the funds left to do that. So we were trying to do it in-house. So um, again, since all of this just came out Friday afternoon, Kelly and Gary and I are are um, working towards how we're going to tackle this and get it all finished and get the application in. So for October 21st meeting, I would be looking for a resolution from council um, to support the Mill Street project unless there is, council has any comments. Um, I've brought this up to you several times as um, um, to get council's consensus that this is the project that we submit for funding and um, what percentage we would be applying for. So at this time, as I said, we I have um, lots of information coming out, um, but until we get some of the numbers from Burnside, we won't have, um, we won't be able to make decisions or recommendations at this point. Okay, uh, moving to public gallery questions and or comments. Uh, okay. Thank you. I'm Luke Silva. I am a uh, multiple property owner in North Huron. And I am questioning what the process is on the severancing of excess farm dwellings in this municipality. I own farms in three municipalities, Central Huron, Mount of Turnbury, and North Huron, and you're the only one that don't allow it yet. And those houses I have in North Huron are rather the pain in the royal, you know what. Okay. Uh, <coughs> but there's currently two municipalities that don't have surplus farm residence severances. Uh, being North Huron and Ashfield, Colburn, Walnosh. Uh, when that North Huron is wanting to get that policy in, but when will Sally be bringing stuff back? We should be seeing more information about our official plan review sometime this fall. Council and the community are anxious to see the, the final draft of that. And uh, would you be pre prepared to uh, put your comments in writing, sir? I have. Uh, oh, you have? I have. That he uh, spoke to Sally at the public meeting. Yes. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. she, I, she I'm has. I'm <laughs> uh, So that as quickly as we can oh, is I the only thing that. I can say. I appreciate that, Neil. It's very well appreciated. Uh, but Sally is aware of the concerns, and that yeah. is part of her review process, that she is looking at, at some kind of a policy that we could adopt that would allow allow just that. The, the, the points that she picked up, she's going back through the plan and working them into it. Um, I wish it was faster, but... Uh, I wasn't expecting anything fast. I just want to make sure that they it, were it, I it, keep It's still on. being worked on. I can assure you that. Yeah. Um, Sorry, can I just get your name again, sir? Luke Schilder, S-C-H-I-L-D-E-R. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Denny. Um, I just, uh, quick question about the, um, the John Street extension. Is, uh, to Kelly, through yourself, uh, Reap, is, is the school responsible for snow removal there as well this year, given the, the one year two party you get from out? That's a good question. <laughs> One other question about the way on BIA through you to Councilor 
available at any time if you get a chance to, if, you, if it would be okay right now, if anybody else would be okay. Um I noticed in the minutes there was the comments about the arch, and I wondered if you could give us an update on where that's at, and also, you know, what percentage of the business owners are in favor of going ahead with that project? Do you have any data on that? Not hard data. I have not heard anybody against it at any meeting I've been at. Uh, it's rough figures right now because they have to determine the, the softness of the land or whatever to put the foundations in. So everything's basically in its first stages. I believe they're having another meeting just the other night. So I can honestly say, except for Steve over there, I don't think I've heard anybody say anything against it. But I mean, we're getting to the point now where we're going to start talking money, so that's when right. things will. And, okay. and that was why I was curious because it was the first time we'd seen some figures, so I was just interested to know how it was progressing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have anything on that or not? Um, the the arch committee is still working on a plan, um, which includes. Um, at this point in time, their last meeting, they decided that they would really like to look at a streetscape master plan and pull some things together with, you know, the stuff that has already been done <coughs> around the Main Street reconstruction. We did that in absence of a streetscape master plan, but uh, um, wondering if we could pull some of that stuff together um, before we even go forward with the arches to see if it would actually work. I think that's a really, really good idea. That's something that I think... Uh I wish we had had time to do before we did Josephine Street was a, a streetscape master plan, and unfortunately we just didn't have the time, uh, you know, to have somebody with that expertise. And I think that's really a, a good idea. Very good. Okay, if there's no yeah, I'm gonna start. Oh. Just wondering, is is it just the business people that's gonna pay for this arch, or the whole town? My understanding is that the BIA would be taken care of. So it's not going to go on the taxpayers' money? No. no. Yeah, just just a point of information. Uh, you may recall that North Huron Council passed a motion approving, approving the idea as, as a concept only. Mm -hmm. And that Council is not, not bound by that motion to Support yeah. financially. I feel the streets need more work than an arch. Like I had a child just did on Tuesday come across the corner of Maple and um, uh, Center Street rollerblading and he hit one of them potholes and he went down. If he hadn't had a helmet on, he'd been injured. Now his hands got all scraped up, but he was fine. Like, why don't we get them streets fixed before we worry about an arch? Your Worship, uh, as far as I know, the BIA is not responsible though, for fixing streets. So I think yeah. that the, the arch is sort of a separate issue. It's their project. Yeah. And uh, streets, maybe that area that uh, the public works manager would be part of that. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions? Favor? Uh, carry uh, for the motion. We will have a short week.